Welcome along guys, well it's time for another new bike review and this time we're getting all adventury again. This is the brand new Africa Twin, a bike which has just come out, it's had a, a capacity increase to 1100cc, it's an absolutely massive machine. I've got this courtesy of Wheels Motorcycles in Peterborough, links below, and if you stick around to the end of the video, I may be able to get you a bit of a deal on one of these. So stay tuned, grab a coffee or a tea, this is going to be a good one. Let's go. The first thing you're going to notice when you turn this bike on is this massive six and a half inch screen it's now got. This thing is now fully loaded. Honda have thrown everything at this now. It's now got the IMU. It's got all of the extras it was lacking. Oh yeah. It is throaty. So specs of this bike, it is an 1100, it's now it's 1,084cc. It's grown 84cc over the old bike. It's still a parallel twin, but it's the, uh, it's the same, basically the same engine. They've made some changes to it. They've shaved a bit of weight off of it. It's 2.7 kilos lighter than the old engine. Overall, the bike is about four kilos lighter. In this guys, which is the adventure sport, you've got the big 24.8 litre tank. So this one weighs about 238 kilos wet. And I think the way Honda do their wet measurements is actually with half a tank of fuel in. So it's not as heavy as the GS. It's around the same weight as the KTM Super Adventure. But where this bike does lack still a little bit, even though it's had the extra 80cc to make it almost an 1100, it's still down a bit on power. It's only around 100 brake horsepower, which don't get me wrong, is plenty, but it's considerably less than the KTM and it's considerably less than the, the BMW. But specs aren't everything. <laughs> and with 105 newton meters of torque, this thing does actually shift and you never, you don't, I have never, I've been riding this bike for about five days now and not once have I thought this bike needs more power. They've elongated the stroke of the engine, so they've not made it wider, they've made it longer, a bit taller. It's got higher lift valves, 10 millimeter higher lift on the valves now, and all other good things like that. It's a cross-plane crank configuration, a bit like the MT range of bikes, like the 890, sorry, the 790 Duke. You know, that, 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 cross plane crank engine gives you that initial punch and it also sounds fantastic Honda have put a lot of effort in for the, getting this bike to sound decent and if you didn't know you could almost think this was a v-twin it sounds absolutely beautiful now this bike also has the optional quick shifter and blipper again they work very, very well indeed. Ergonomic wise, it now has 25 millimeter higher handlebars to make it a bit more comfortable. Also make it a better off-road bike. Like I'm 6'2", I can stand up on this and those handlebars are in the perfect position for doing a bit of trail riding. The Honda have done more for this to make it better off-road. They've made the seat 10 millimeter thinner so you can grip the tank easier. It also makes it easier to touch the ground if you are slightly vertically challenged. So how does this compare to the GS from a rider perspective? Well, the first thing to notice with this is it comes with a 21 inch front wheel. There's no smaller front wheel option. So this is, you know, I, I don't like 21 inch front wheels on the road. They're great, obviously you need them for off-road, but I do kind of wish Honda had given this a, a 19 inch front option because that really does make a bike handle so much better as a road bike. With a 21 inch the front can feel a little bit vague, the tyre fitment is limited, it's a much skinnier rim on the front which gives you less grip so it would really be my preference if they came with a, with a 19 and then the 21 was an option if you wanted to do off-road on this bike but it doesn't it comes with a 21 which does impact the handling of it if you're going through a tight section of road you know the, the ch directional changes are a little bit slower you get a bit less feedback from the front end but on, as a whole it's a very well it's a beautiful bike to ride 
and listen to that. That sounds mean, doesn't it? <laughs> it sounds beautiful. Throttle response is crisp. There's none of that normal Euro 4, Euro 5 snatchiness. It's perfectly, they spent a long time mapping this, getting it absolutely spot on. Wind protection on the bike is just unbelievable. I've never ridden a bike with a screen as high as this. That is the screen in the lower position. I'm 6'2", and I'm sort of just looking over that screen in the lower position. If I put that in the higher position, which is a manual screen, you have to, you have to use the adjusters. You actually have to touch both sides. It says you can only adjust the screen when the bike is stopped. That's because you need two hands to do it. You've got to do that push those in and lift it. It only moves about two inches, but with that in its higher position, I'm now looking through directly the top of that screen. It's almost too big, and, and I'm six foot two. Equipment levels, oh, Honda is again throwing everything at this. Heated grips come standard. All of this color touch screen and all of the features this has got come on all the models, that is standard. Six and a half inch TFT, multiple rider modes, You've got two customizable rider modes, a user one and a user two, where you can customize power and engine braking characteristics. On all of the modes, you can adjust the traction control. It's got seven, level, seven levels of adjustment on the traction control. And, it, and, it, and you can program it. It's also got a favorite button on the switch gear. I mean, look at this switch gear. It is very complicated looking. And there's actually a favorite button, which has been programmed to adjust the traction control on the fly, which is nice. The bike's now got an IMU, so you've got all of the cornering ABS, all of that advanced traction control system. When you've got an IMU, when it's detecting when the bike is lent over and you're giving it power, that makes a huge difference. It's even got wheelie control separated from the traction control, which is fantastic. I mean, this bike with wheelie control on one, <laughs> dare I say it, because this is still being run in but this can actually crack some very decent wheelies what Honda say is they've allowed it to wheelie so you can enjoy more active riding I guess if you're going off road you may need to clutch it up and do a little wheelie over logs and stuff like that so it allows you to have a bit of fun and this bike does actually wheelie very well indeed so I'm told There you go. I mean, you're not going to be wheeling in third gear when you open the throttle, like you are on the Super Adventure. This is much more of a, of a, I like to say sedate, but a smoother, less aggressive ride. But we're still with enough torque and power, really, to, to do whatever you need to do on an adventure bike. Do you need 150 horsepower on the venture bike and, and be wheeling around in third gear? Uh, maybe. <laughs> the jury's out on that, but most people wouldn't. I'm just a bit of a bit of a hooligan. It's got two speedos, as you may have noticed, and that is because if you had this in the navigation mode, you could still use the old LCD speedo at the bottom. The Africa Twins always had this small lcd speedo and, and they've kept that which has your gear indicator you know it has things showing on there which aren't always showing on the touchscreen my ocd doesn't like the fact that the speedos differ slightly <laughs> if they don't display exactly the same speed that that does get you that does get me a little bit <laughs> that gets me ocd a little bit that sounds absolutely great doesn't it it sounds more aggressive than any of the other adventure bikes, even ones with more actually with more power. It sounds better than those. It goes like a stink. Because it's a bit lighter than some of its competitors, even though it's down on power and a little bit of torque, because it's lighter, you can hustle it. And it feels quick, it does feel quick, and because it sounds so nice. That also makes you think you're perhaps going faster than you are. The brakes are very good. Obviously with the IMU, you've got the cornering ABS, but you do just get a little bit of vagueness from the front wheel because it's a 21. Oh, it sounds beautiful. That 
absolutely beautiful. Loads of power for overtakes. 100 horsepower really is all you need. The suspension, even though this is the conventionally suspended bike, is very, very comfortable. Even nice enough to push on with. I don't know if I'd spend extra on the electronic stuff, to be honest. After riding this, not once have I thought, oh, it's a bit harsh or it's a bit soft when I'm pushing on. It is really set up in that perfect in-between position, the Goldilocks zone, as I like to call it. <laughs> okay, let's get on the motorway, see what the wind protection is like, and try out the cruise control. Just under 4,000 revs at 70, absolutely cruising. Wind protection with the screen in its lowest position. My chest, I've got nothing at all. All of this screen, all of, all of that just gives you so much protection. Off the screen, I mean, I'm not even getting, the helmet isn't even vibrating on the motorway. With a peaked helmet, normally that could be vibrating, especially with my height, 75, no helmet vibrations whatsoever. I don't get the vibrations until I really lift myself out of the seat. And that's in the lowest position. Cruise control, push the cruise button down here, push the little flapper, put the flapper down and the cruise is now set. And then you can increase that by clicking that up, clicking that down. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's a very good system, works like all of the other cruise control systems. The bike also comes with one of the best heated grip systems I've ever tried. There's seven or five or six different levels of heated grips. I've got it maxed out and they're absolutely thermonuclear. Even with full on winter gloves, I can feel that heat coming through. My hands are absolutely toasty. Oh, it's nice. It is very, very nice. The quality of the bike is evident. I mean, on the walk around, I'll show you the detailing of it, the, 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 the build quality of it is typical Honda. It's very, very good. And, it's, and that quality comes through on the actual ride as well. It feels like a quality machine. I mean, the, the, the GS is also a quality machine. This feels perhaps a little bit more quality than the, the, the GS even and certainly a higher quality than, the, than the, the Super Adventure from KTM. Honda have, have really worked hard on this bike and it does really show. I have to say, Honda, you've done a great job with this one. Right, let's have a little pull up in my favorite pub up here and we'll do the walk around. So there she is. One of the best things about this bike really is the quality of the machine. This colour, this paint, all of this paint is, is pearlescent. It really shines when the sun's out, which it isn't at the moment. And this blue and red, I mean, the, the quality of that paintwork is very, very nice. We now have full LED headlights with cornering lights. The IMU gives it the functionality to now put cornering lights in for nighttime riding. I really like the white frame, what they've done by making the frame white and sort of integrated it as part of the bodywork. Of course it comes with the big belly pan for the reworked exhaust, twin lander sensors in each of the each of the, the down pipes and a big catalyst here and obviously the valves in the exhaust underneath of this cover here I'm presuming. But the exhaust itself actually looks decent for Euro 5 and all that there's not much wrong with that. Of course it has all of the provisions for luggage, integrated luggage system, again with the top box on top of the rack. The seat, as I mentioned, is actually 10 millimeters thinner. It's just, you know, little, little touches, little, little quality touches. The fasteners and fixings are all very nice. The way all the fairings fit together little touches like these little anodized bar ends just it's add to the quality the switch gear busy as it is you will not find switch gear much busier than that but the buttons are all 
of a very high quality. If we just circle through a couple of the modes, so you can see it in a bit more detail. Hopefully, there we go. Gravel, you know, you can say you've got different display modes. I mean, it's becoming more and more standard on bikes now, this type of thing. My only criticism with some of this, and especially with the switch gear, it is quite complicated to work out how to use it. I mean, I ride a lot of bikes and this is the most complicated one. I had to resort to a YouTube video to find out how to set up the power modes for the user mode. And to do it, you have to click the top of the screen there and it takes you into all these options. I mean, how do you know? You need to know that. You can't just figure that out for yourself. So that would be my only, you know, one of my few criticisms is it is quite complicated, but I guess once you've mastered it, you've mastered it. I mean, I could do a whole video just talking you through all of the features of this display and all of the controls. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> but suffice to say, it's got everything on it, but it can be a little bit fiddly to learn how to access it all. Okay, let's jump back on. Let's hit it. So, the Africa Twin. What's my final thoughts on it? Well, I like it a lot. If I was in the market for an adventure bike, this would most certainly be on the shortlist. My only criticism really is the, the, the complexity of all of the technology. I think perhaps the integration of it could have been easier. You know, rather than have such busy switch gear, I mean, when you've got gloves on, this is really quite hard to, to operate, especially winter gloves. There's a little toggle here, left and right, which you need to push. You know, it's, it's not that easy to use all of that technology, but I guess once you're used to it, it's fine. You, you, you'll probably learn how to use it all properly, but it is quite complicated. That is probably the only real criticism I have with the bike. That and the fact I wish it had a 19 inch front wheel option just to tighten up that front end a little bit for when you are just riding on the road. Because let's be honest, I'm not sure how many people take their big adventure, your big expensive adventure bikes off road. I know there are some crazy fools, <laughs> Mr. Fish, but I don't think that many people do. Perhaps I'm wrong, perhaps they do. Perhaps it's much more popular than I imagine it is. But I think in the UK with the sort of lanes we have, I think, I, I don't think, I, I, my personal opinion is I don't think it happens that often. I could be wrong. I think it's more the case that people buy these bikes as long distance mile munchers with no intention of going off road. In which case a 19 inch front would be a better option. Insurance for one of these, I had a quote from my friends at Moto, and for Nigel, my test subject, I'll pop some details on the screen about Nigel for all his T's and C's. But for Nigel, this was £253, I believe, for the titanium cover. So sort of in line with the Super Adventure, you know, in line with those other big adventure bikes, and there's some comparisons with the other quotations which Nigel has had. It is a lovely, lovely bike. I think a bike to do a lot of miles on, you could probably do it on this easier than what you could the GS or the Super Adventure. And with the, you know, the smoothness of the engine, the power delivery, the comfort in our gear, especially for a taller rider, it's absolutely brilliant for a taller rider with that the screen height, the seat height and the bar height. Absolutely beautiful. So it does really, it's right up there with the best of the adventure bikes. Absolutely. Now I must say a massive thank you to Wheels Motorcycles for lending me this bike. This is brand new out not even fully run in yet it is now and i've got a bit of an offer for you which i mentioned at the beginning if you buy an africa twin the new model from wheels motorcycles and mention the lamb chops rides review they will throw in the, the optional quick shifter free of charge now that is a 700 pound option and if you mention me and this review you can have one of those for nothing yeah thank me later so this review can save you 700 quid. You can't argue with that. So there we go. Thanks very much for watching, guys. I will be on the whole host of other new bikes. 
If you've not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. I'm going to be riding the new Triumph Rocket shortly, the new ZH2 when it's available. All of the other lovely bikes, and I've just started working with Ducati as well, so I'm going to be hopefully getting on the new Street Fighter. I'm picking up the new Hypermotar and SP for test tomorrow. So there's a lot of bike reviews to come, so please subscribe to the channel, click the bell, and I will see you next time. See you later.